From the tiny Panzer I to the massive mouse, this is the complete catalog of every German vehicle used in World War II. Let's start with light tanks. Panzer I, the training tank that went to war. Weighing only 5.4 tons, it was armed with twin 7.92mm MG-13 machine guns. Its armor was only 13mm thick, vulnerable to almost any anti-tank rifle. Despite being designed solely for training, it formed the bulk of the armored divisions during the invasion of Poland in 1939. Panzer II, the interim solution. Recognizing the Panzer I weakness, Germany introduced the Panzer II. It was upgunned with a 2 cm KWK-30 autocannon, capable of penetrating light armor. It was the primary tank of the Blitzkrieg in France, utilizing a radio in every vehicle to coordinate superior tactics against heavier French tanks. Panzer II looks. The Lynx. Designated Panzerkampfwagen II Os. This was a late war fully tracked reconnaissance vehicle. It featured a completely redesigned chassis with overlapping road wheels and a top speed of 60 km per hour, designed to scout ahead of the Panzer divisions. Panzer 35T. The Czech acquisition. After annexing Czechoslovakia, the Wehrmacht adopted the LT 35. It featured a pneumatic transmission and a 3.7 cm gun. It was mechanically complex but served reliably in the early campaigns alongside German designs. Panzer 38T The definitive light tank of the early war. Mechanically superior to the Panzer I and II, the Czech-built 38T was armed with a 37mm gun and featured riveted armor. Even after it became obsolete as a tank, its reliable chassis became the foundation for legendary tank destroyers like the Hetzer. Moving on to medium tanks, the backbone of the Blitzkrieg. Panzer III, early variants. The OSP, a through F. Designed as Germany's primary anti-tank vehicle. It was originally armed with a 3.7 cm gun to match the infantry's anti-tank guns. It set the standard for crew ergonomics, with a three-man turret that allowed the commander to focus on tactics. Panzer III, late variants. The OSP, J through N. As enemy armor improved, the Panzer III was upgunned with a long-barrel 50mm KWK-39 gun. Later versions, like the OSF, N, were fitted with a short 75mm howitzer for infantry support, serving until the end of the war. Panzer IV, short barrel, the OSF, a through F1. This was originally the heavy support tank. It mounted the short-barreled 7.5cm KWK-37L-24 howitzer. While excellent at destroying bunkers with high-explosive shells, its low velocity made it ineffective against heavily armored enemy tanks like the Matilda or T-34. Panzer IV, Long Barrel, the OSP, F-2 through J. To counter the Soviet T-34 shock, the Panzer IV was upgraded with the high-velocity 7.5cm KWK-40 gun. This upgrade allowed it to penetrate Allied armor at standard combat ranges. It became the most produced German tank of the war, with over 8,500 units built. Panzer V Panther, the OSP, D, A, and G, Germany's direct answer to the T-34. The Panther weighed 45 tons and featured thick sloped frontal armor. Its main weapon, the 7.5 cm KWK-42, actually had better penetration stats than the Tiger Eyes gun. It is widely considered the best medium tank design of World War II. Now, the heavy tanks, the legends of World War II, Tiger I, the Panzer VI, the icon of terror. Weighing 54 tons, it was armed with the deadly 8.8 cm KWK-36 gun and protected by 100 mm of flat frontal armor. In 1942, it was virtually invulnerable to Allied guns, requiring Shermans and T-34s to close to suicidal point-blank ranges to disable it. Tiger II, King Tiger, the Tiger Osp, B, the apex predator of the war. Weighing nearly 70 tons, it combined the thick armor of a heavy tank with the sloped design of the Panther. Its long 8.8 cm KWK-43 gun was the most powerful anti-tank gun mounted on a turret, capable of destroying any Allied tank from over 2 km away. Next, the tank destroyers. Germany built more tank destroyer variants than any other nation. Panzer Jogger I, Germany's first attempt at a self-propelled anti-tank gun. It mounted a Czech 4.7 cm gun on an obsolete Panzer I chassis. It was a stopgap measure that proved the concept of mobile tank hunting was viable. Martyr II, built on the Panzer II chassis. 
As the Panzer II became obsolete, the chassis was repurposed to mount the potent 7.5 cm Pac-40 anti-tank gun. It gave the Wehrmacht a mobile heavy punch on the Eastern Front. Martyr III, built on the reliable Czech 38T chassis, produced in large numbers, the Martyr III mounted either Soviet-captured 76mm guns or German 75mm Pac-40s. It was the workhorse of the anti-tank battalion's mid-war. Hetzer, Jagd Panzer 38T, small, easily concealed, and deadly. The Hetzer mounted a 75mm gun on a widened 38T chassis with highly sloped armor. It was cheap to produce and its low profile made it an ambush nightmare for Allied crews. Stuji 3, short barrel. The Sturmgeschutz 3 Osf, A to E, originally designed as an assault gun for infantry support. It lacked a turret, giving it a very low profile and fired high explosive shells from a short 75mm gun. Stuji 3, long barrel, upgunned with the high velocity 75mm cannon, the Stuji 3 became the deadliest tank killer of the war. Statistically, Stuji S destroyed more Allied tanks than the Tigers and Panthers combined. Stuji 4, essentially a Stuji superstructure mounted on a Panzer IV hull. This was a logical standardization to keep production lines moving when Panzer III chassis production ceased. Jagd Panzer IV, a specialized low-profile tank hunter based on the Panzer IV chassis. The late versions, known as the Panzer IV-70, mounted the Panther's long 75mm gun, making them exceptionally dangerous. Moving to the heavy tank destroyers, Mobile bunkers designed to kill heavy armor. Nashorn, the Rhino. It mounted the deadly long 88mm gun on a hybrid Panzer III-4 chassis. It had very thin armor and an open top, designed to engage enemies from extreme distances where it could not be seen. Jag Panther, arguably the best tank destroyer of the war. Built on the Panther chassis, it combined excellent speed, thick sloped armor, and the long 88mm gun. It was fast enough to relocate and strong enough to take a hit. Ferdinand, Elephant, built on rejected Porsche Tiger hulls. It featured 200 mm of frontal armor and a complex petrol-electric drive system. While formidable in a defensive line, it was mechanically unreliable and initially lacked a machine gun for defense against infantry. Jag Tiger, the heaviest armored fighting vehicle to sea service. Weighing 71 tons and armed with a colossal 12.8 cm Pac-44 gun. Could knock out any tank in existence even through buildings. However, its massive weight caused frequent breakdowns and fuel shortages. Next, self-propelled artillery. Mobile firepower. Sturmpanzer I Bison. A 150 mm heavy infantry gun mounted on a tiny Panzer I chassis. It was crude, top-heavy and overloaded the engine but provided mobile heavy fire early in the war. West, the Wasp, a 105 mm light field howitzer mounted on a modified Panzer II chassis. Small and agile, it supported Panzer divisions with rapid indirect fire. Hummel, the Bumblebee, a heavy 150 mm howitzer mounted on a dedicated chassis combining parts of the Panzer III and IV. It was the heavy hitter of German mobile artillery batteries. Sturm Tiger, a specialized urban warfare vehicle. Built on a recovered Tiger I chassis, it fired a massive 380mm rocket-propelled depth charge. It was designed to level entire buildings with a single shot during the Warsaw Uprising. Let's look at the Flakpanzers. Mobile anti-aircraft defense. Flakpanzer I. A simple 2cm Flak 38 gun mounted on a Panzer I. The crew had almost no protection, and the vehicle was unstable during firing. Whirlwind, the Whirlwind, a Panzer IV chassis with a distinctive open-top hexagonal turret housing four 20mm cannons. It created a wall of lead devastating against low-flying aircraft and soft ground targets. Ostwind, the East Wind, similar to the Whirlwind but armed with a single, more powerful 3.7cm Flak 43 gun, offering better range and hitting power. Coelian, a prototype Flak Panzer based on the Panther chassis. It featured a fully enclosed turret with twin 3.7 cm guns, offering the crew full armor protection, though it never entered full production. Moving to logistics and support. SD, KFZ, 251, Hanamag, the definitive German half-track. It carried Panzer Grenadiers into battle, protecting them from small arms fire. It had over 20 different variants, equipping flamethrowers, anti-tank guns, and rockets. SD, KFZ, 
234 Puma, an eight-wheeled heavy armored car, fast, silent, and armed with a 50 millimeters gun. It featured a second driver's seat facing backward, allowing it to retreat at full speed without turning around. Kubel Wagon, the German equivalent of the Jeep. Designed by Ferdinand Porsche, it was a simple, light, rear-wheel drive utility car. Unlike the Jeep, it was not four-wheel drive, but its light weight allowed it to be lifted out of mud by the crew. Schwimwigen, an amphibious version of the Kubel Wagon. It was the most mass-produced amphibious car in history, featuring a propeller that flipped down from the rear to cross rivers. Kettenkrad, a unique motorcycle tank hybrid. Designed for paratroopers, it could be dropped by aircraft. It was used to tow guns, lay cables, and navigate the thick mud of the Eastern Front that trapped wheeled vehicles. Goliath Tracked Mine, the remote-controlled demolition vehicle. Carrying 60 kilograms of explosives, it was steered via a long wire to drive into bunkers or under tanks before detonating. Finally, the Wonder Weapons, the projects that arrived too late. Mouse, the heaviest tank ever built, weighing 188 tons. It mounted a 128mm main gun and a 75mm coaxial gun. Only two prototypes were completed. It was a moving fortress, but would have been a logistical nightmare to transport. E100, part of the Entwicklung series to standardize German tank production. The E100 was a super heavy tank competitor to the mouse. The hull was completed, but the turret was never fitted before the war ended. Landkreuzer P, 1000 Rat, a proposed land cruiser weighing 1000 tons. It would have mounted naval battleship guns. While never built, it represents the extreme megalomania of German late war engineering.